Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm on Seiler. But uh, before we get to our um, show today on sports and people with disabilities, and also um, a, a show in Brooklyn called... Uh, uh, Ron Rondon's road trip or road road trip with Ron Rondon. Um, let's um, go into our sponsors. We would like to thank um, our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnerships of Yachad, New York, and New England, um, the partnership of Habitat for Humanity of Central Vermont, the partnership of the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the partnership of uh, Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, and um, other partnerships as well, including now the partnership with uh, Road Trip with Ron Rondon at Brick Arts Media in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, welcome to Ableton on Air, Ron. And what do you think is that's a great introduction and that's a, that's a great honor to uh, add that to your sponsorship. And I want to thank you very much for that. How are you right. doing, by the way? We're doing great here in Vermont. How's it going in Brooklyn? Well, good this afternoon. It's, uh, we're, we're taking some show here and then getting ready to uh, do a reboot of our first show uh, tonight. There was scheduled for tonight's road trip, by the way. Uh, that was tonight, however, uh, due to the, a little bit of our Wi-Fi and a little bit of conflict, this stuff is now rescheduled for next Friday night, and that will be on October 15th, and I mm -hmm. uh, kick off year number eight. Well, can you explain, well, before we get into sports, um, can you explain a little bit about Road Trip with Ron and Rondon, your, you know, your show? Because you've been a um, sports uh, caster for uh, with talk show, um, uh, with yeah. with talk show AM radio and and podcasting and all of that, and you well, you also used to work for USA Network. Uh, well, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. Net, a lot of uh, great for the lot of people that would start USA Network. Now it becomes NBC Universal, and that was one of the uh, great comic organizations. Uh, I've been there for the last 16 years, which mm -hmm. is uh, great. I'm very pleased they uh, do that. Uh, the show Road Trip that I'm now starting my eighth season of the show is pop culture, entertainment, food. Cheryl will have a lot of good fun. 
Plus, we have some brand new stuff this year, and it's even more exciting because we've got some great musical groups, musical acts that will be sent all local, and they're local performers that were going across the way, uh, starting with um, the Good Live Band, one of which uh, resonates is a great group mm-hmm. who performed some of these stuff. And the show that will be scheduled, that was scheduled, supposed to be scheduled tonight, now to be next week. Her name is Oxley Johnson, and she's a local Brooklynite who is, her ancestors are from Japan. And I want to give a big shout out to Oxley Johnson, Johnson and her terrific band. Um, can you explain why, well, well, I mean, you have challenges, but you know, learn disability and other challenges. Explain why you decided to go into TV production. Well, you know, um, I've, been, I've been a big TV, a TV junkie myself because I love game shows. And then when I got to game shows and sports and everything else, when art occurred the time I was in Brooklyn, I came to a community college. And I want to also give a shout out to Maria Cavanaugh who invited me for the first time in 2008. And he helped us give flyers and all that stuff. And then he says, you finish your day, you do very well, have some fun, mingle around. And then when I look about game show and game show taping right there, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, like I want to say also another shout out to Art Curtis, Bill Manners, and the team over at uh, Art Curtis, Bill Manners Production, who does game show for our party, which is also on, by the way, on Brooklyn Free Speech. And it's on the free, and that's on a late Saturday night from 1 to 1.30, and Sunday after 12 to 12.30. That's on that station. Um, they got me into game shows, got me into contestants, the regular parts of the team. And now one day, got me there about five years later, and he says, You look good. You want to get you in TV. You did, you did, Sparkett and Photography.com and all that stuff. And they asked me, Can you do it in TV? And then I was thinking about it, thinking about it until 2013. I just practice run. And said, You know what? This will fit me. And then that's what they got me into TV. You got me into helping get into Brick Art Media as well. Now, can and you now, explain, uh, before Arlene asks some questions, what, what exactly, let, let's, um, so what what exactly is Brick, uh, Brick Art Media? Well, Brick Art Media is a local and non profit TV. This is for act. This is for a lot of talented young people who want to get into productions, directing, producing their own shows. To me, I put in 50 shows on my road trip. This is a show for basically not only my show, other great shows, created over 650 hours of programming on five networks, including uh, Broken Bridges 1, 2, 3, 4, and of course, HD. And more stations. More cable systems like they're actually the right to join the network. Just like um, the Hatton Neighborhood Network, um, yeah. for Princeton Television, as a public TV, public TV in Princeton, New Jersey, they will add some more great, great programs. So you're, wait a minute, so your show, your show is going to be airing in New Jersey as well? Hopefully sooner or later, because uh, one of my guys, Adam Bierman, that I met him during every Christmas uh, day after Thanksgiving, we did a taping for the tree lighting at Palmer Square in Britain. Mm-hmm. And he says, maybe one day, maybe you can get me in the show and get me in those shows over on Princeton TV. Let's all open the bathroom. We're going to express bringing a swash for it. And we could pick up New Jersey. You never can tell. Mm-hmm. Come on. But, but um, okay, so, so let's, um, Arlene, did you want to ask any questions right now? Yeah. How, how long have you been doing your show, Ron? Right now, six and a half years doing the show. Mm-hmm. And can you, a can you... Of, and a total of 250 shows, including the season finale, that you can see later tonight, so they replay from Nisto Hall's in Brooklyn, New York, and it's a German restaurant with a bar, and they got a good lot of and uh, if you want to check it out tonight, a terrific band called Resonate, they're going to be performing... Mm-hmm. Can you can you explain uh, can you explain a little bit um, the type of di- is, uh, well we focus on abilities not necessarily the the um, the disability of the person but can you explain a little bit about your challenge and um, 
and then we'll get oh. into sports. Okay. You know, ever since I was a um, little baby before, you know, I have learning disability, you know, like sometimes like brain injuries or something like that. When they put me to uh, special ed when I first came, and the school, I don't know, it was called uh, CS94, was my first two years. And then the school that got me all the way into higher ground, to start more challenging, it was CS120, it was uh, public school, 126, Ryan Brock, Ryan Brock, and I used to live in hybrid, and I'm, I'm the house, my apartment, was across the street from that school. So when I went there, just go to school, come back, samples, one, two, three. And then when you do the learning disability for the last uh, five years, then went to a couple junior high school, went through it, then to high school, and then to mostly, uh, you ever saw like a, you remember CGS way back then? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so to me, a contemporary guy in services, it was got me into retail, to the retail business. I went all the way through it, got that certificate that was very nice, the gift to take home. And then when you got to a part-time, or oh, part-time was like three hours, you know, they, they don't pay enough money like that, no way. So so when I got to and went for very challenges, since I went to a, a law program, and there's another one called Carolina Clinic, and that got me the law program for the last uh, four or five, like, I don't know, the 1983 to 1992. So almost nine years at this place. I know I used to be a lot of social writing, but I did some a little office work along the way, including doing coffee. And that got me into bigger ground. That's when I got to the MDC Universal, which is for two USA Network, but now become MDC Universal. I does a lot of mailroom work from popping, the toy, and then to a little bit of DBT work. It's a challenge for me. And then when I left, and then the no more for me. Then they got me into the got me into the radio podcast. Seeing another person, just give a shout out, like gives me a bird. Got me a shout out. Listen to her show, and then they got my sports show uh, for seven great years on the show. And now, and then came the road trip. Now I'm into my eighth season of the show. It's all challenging. It's very important that you just start low, work, go big, go high. That's what we came. That's why I came through this place. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, so there's no more talk show. Dot com. Well, well, for, for the time being, because for whenever there's a special show like uh, Peter, uh, Peter, 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 but as far as the team is concerned, I'm still doing this. I'm still doing some shows, not only from home, but I also do shows from outside. Thanks to our being back a little bit back during the So uh, right now, done some shows from outside. Uh, the winery, you know how to call the winery right down in uh, Bay Ridge side in Brooklyn? Yeah. No. Well, the winery? The winery, yeah. It's called, it's called Celery. It's called Celery. And it's a wine, it's a winery right there in Brooklyn, New York, Round Bay Ridge. Mm. And then they have a special uh, summer walkthrough. I was uh, tasting the wine; it was just fantastic. And right there, and then at the same time, I met uh, I'm with three Justin. Just so you'll see the opening next week, and you see where we're at. There. Wait, wait, wait! You, hold on. You said you met Imus? No, no, no. Her name's I'm with three Justin. Oh, okay. Okay. And so AI means I because that's what the A final because that's why it's Japanese. That's what they call it anyway. All right. Let's talk a little. Um, uh, any qu- other questions you want to ask, Arlene? No, uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, what's going on with the sports um, that we can um, talk about for the next 15 minutes? Well, there's a, there's a number of them uh, we've been talking about. We know the World Series, well, the whole season just started already. Uh, of course, the Yankees and the Mets are out. But there's a number of... I know, of- and I was so, I was so annoyed about that, about the Yankees not getting in there. Because with Boston, like with the Boston <laughs> players, and the Boston's been a tough team, because they, when they face the drivers, they either in the regular season keep winning, sometimes they lose. 
this year, this is a bad season, and they got more games won for the Boston Red Sox for the Yankees. And then the last game on uh, Wednesday, when Cole Garrett, Garrett Cole, the pitcher, and with his first piece of $327 million in his contract, and I look at the Daily News, and I look at the Daily News, the front page, it says $327 million of that after losing 4-1. to one. That, oh, God. That, is, that is the most ridiculous uh, headline the Daily News had. But look, he did very well this season. He's done outstanding base on pitching. And he's not going to go away with that easy. He'll be back next season. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. It takes, it takes a better kind of defense. Need some good defensive players. But the best part about the offense has been outstanding. But it's time to yeah. get more defenses next year. So there's I think, well, um, uh, let's talk about coronavirus and sports for a minute because I, I think that the 2020 season of sports uh, completely was um, really, really bad because how the heck are you going to have cardboard cutouts or cardboard, cardboard players in the stands. I remember that last year because I'll say that makes that, that makes absolutely uh, just like just like Warner Wolf put it uh, on his it, you know talking about Rocky Four for a minute uh, you know the movie Rocky Four. Um, yeah. Uh, Warner Wolf said that's absolute pandemonium. So <laughs> it, I mean. I knew it. It, it's 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 really 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 bad when you don't have fans when you don't have fans in the stands. Period. Yeah, it is crazy. No, it is crazy. But you know what? Sometimes they always have about fans like for example, across NASCAR, for example, the uh, college football season. One like for example, the University of South Florida, the Bulls. They have so many credit cards. But they do donate all the proceeds to a good charity. At least that's a good thing about it. But it is, you know, far, it is so boring when you see cardboard cars, like, for example, you miss the real crowd coming in to stand in it. But last year, if you remember last year when Fox Ford did something ridiculously crazy because they had no fans in it, the cardboard. But they use technology. They use like uh, virtual fans in there. Like, you know, brought the uh, baseball, uh, baseball diamond. They show the fans just so I can computerize technology. But yeah. still, not, not being in any whatsoever. And then when you look at the uh, the basketball season, well, they're at Coral Park. But they can show fans the camera. Like, for example, you can get from your own camera and you can watch the game as you see, as the fans of the stands, mm-hmm. it wasn't bad at all, except if you're like uh, being in the audience or being a fan you're, fan, you're, like that. Same with the NHL, and they have the fan cam with uh, with a lot of happy uh, Tampa Bay Lightning with the great yeah. up. Until now, they actually brought back the, the, the fans. Fans, like for example, the people are. Fully vaccinated, they bring their cards. Like, for example, if you bring your cards, or they show up to the, to the security, everything, make sure you're fully vaccinated, and the cards. They already bought the first two weeks of the season, they put in, for example, first responders, uh, nurses, um, essential work. They come in, they see about 11,000. One time when the Yankees came on, did the uh, show right inside? Well, not that. I think the show was by Yankees did it. They picked 11,000 fans. That's about 20 percent of the fans in Zero Bowl 53,000. They did for a price of every state. So sometimes Milwaukee, for example, at a American Family Field, they see about eight, ten thousand 10,000 people. There also there's one in Arizona, there's about 9,000 people. Until the summer, and the things got even better during July. They decided to bring it all in. Every fan, even they have to show the proof of the uh, the, the uh, vaccine shot. They showed up 
But okay, so let me so 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 let me get this straight. Um, since you're talking sports and health in a sense, so in other words, you can't go to a stadium or go to a sports venue unless you have your vaccination card. Is that is is that the rule? For any reason, two reasons. Yes, you need your vaccination card. Make sure you're fully vaccinated. You can use a card, and now they can use a virtual uh, card, a virtual card that says either from uh, New York City State, uh, New York State of South Pier, or this CCG uh, card safe pass to show you proof that you were vaccinated. And once you do it, you go in to the same. Same as restaurant, same as everything else. But this is a very important thing you have to have. I have one on, on my phone. You have to download this for free, and this is uh, very good. But you also have the card. Yeah. Even if you have the card, you can use it. And if you have the uh, phone with the uh, with the app, <coughs> that's a problem, too. Mm-hmm. Use mm-hmm. But they... um. <laughs> so let me get this straight. They will not allow you, though, to I'm go. Not allowed, so, but this is a very important thing. We go to sports venues, we go to restaurants, or theater, or any place. Okay, okay, okay. They have to use proof. That's a joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and plus. Any pl- type of sporting event, you're going to have your, your COVID card. That's it. It's called COVID safe, and that's a yeah, thing right. you have to Go ahead. Uh, uh, who, who do you think is going to go to the Super Bowl this year? Well, right now, there's still a couple teams that I was looking at. It's Tom Brady's um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which I'm telling you, this guy is too good, number one. Because Tampa Bay won a Super Bowl with the man himself. He thought we got that in the Super Bowl. If he goes like it's like, hey, he has nobody, and I said nobody would mind. He is one of the greatest quarterbacks. You can, you can, you can get nothing wrong about this. He could be an automatic first ballot Hall of Famer if he keeps it up. Yeah. If he wins, it will. If he wins again this year, it will be his eighth Super Bowl, and could be his. I don't know how many MVPs he had already, but my God, he. Yeah, it'll, make it, it'll, make, it'll, it'll make his wife happy. I know, with the, I know, his wife is going to go for Bill, but what? And I know, she's from, she's from Brazil. Yeah, and I tell you, you see him, you're, you're, you're seen in the movie Devil with Parada? She, she was I in it. Yeah, I saw that movie, it was a great one right there. Yeah, yeah. she was in it, yeah. <laughs> is there okay so while, while we have uh, hold on so while we have six minutes left any anything that uh now you're you're going on eight seasons anything you want to talk about your with your show that's coming up in the right. future well let me tell you what we got for our big eight season because it's amazing you check this out of course i said we got some more music surprises uh from two different venues this year uh, this year, it's already Smithville Hog. Uh, that's like uh, the favorite side of Brooklyn. And we're hopefully in 2022, we'll be back at Greenhouse Cafe to do some brand new uh, original Thursday night uh, open mic. I'll be part of it, and I'll be uh, introducing some of the bands to be hearing from. And so, of course, shout out to two guys who uh, the, the great people at staff over there, but also Charles Colorado who also directed that episode, uh, our 250th episode, and also to um, Max Allen, who is fantastic. He's great. The face Matt Christopher, a great musician, a great outstanding. He hosts the original version of night. So give a shout out to him. We'll be looking for it this season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also coming up on the season ahead, of course, we're, going, we're coming back to our original Christmas and December celebration. Of course, last year was nothing because of due to the color uh, epidemic and other things that could happen. This year again, we'll be back in. Uh, I'll be back in Princeton, New Jersey. To do so, so we're doing a little different this year because this year I always started for instance to start off with to kick off our Christmas and December celebration. But this year, when I think, I was thinking like go to other places before Princeton. Of course, I'll be taking Princeton the day after Thanksgiving. 
So we pulled it out at the end of the year to celebrate the uh, big celebration. We've got a lot of good performers this year to be looking for it, including the uh, students that representing School of Rock. They mm-hmm. did Christmas Carol music. It was so much fun. You're going to love these kids. They're fantastic. And also from the American Repertory Ballet that represented all the Christmas Jersey with some, uh, a couple of their fantastic performances. So we're looking forward to it. And of course, Philadelphia, of course, will begin then it at the South Street Seaport. Oh, oh, hold on. So you're going to go to Philadelphia? Once again, yeah. I haven't been to Philadelphia in quite a while anyway. Yeah. For the Christmas celebration, I'll be looking for that. And of course, there's a lot more surprises this year, including the Winter Carnival. We'll get some more TV. You'll see your way back to Mark Church. And then some virtual surprises. So, wait, so when you go to Philadelphia, do you work with anybody, or is it basically yourself? Myself, I was looking for it, and hopefully. And hopefully, they also got something about a public access channel in Philadelphia that could also be invited here from the New York to Philadelphia. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted on all of that. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. Uh, so before we end, um, and, you know, uh, first of all, we want to like to congratulate you on your eighth season uh, of, 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 um, of Road Trip with Ron Rondon. Um from now, is there anywhere? Um, uh, give me the website that uh, that road trip with Ron Rondon's on. Well, there's a lot to be said. So first, let me tell you. Well, every uh, every Friday, it starts like, for example, for your early bird. I don't know how you have extra caffeine or anything else. It starts at four thirty a.m. to five a.m. for the first run episode, and of course later tonight for the encore which will be 11.30 p.m. to midnight before Spotify and Theater, And that's on Brooklyn 3 Feet 1. So if you're in the Brooklyn area, you can watch it on cable, on, of course, uh, let's see what I said, Optimum and LT, Channel 57, RCN Channel 82, also on Spectrum on Channel 1995, and on the right-hand file that represents Brooklyn on Channel 42. And if you want, if you're not in any of these areas, you can uh, check out Road Trip every Friday night or, of course, on Friday morning, depending on either 4.30 a.m. or 11.30 p.m. Give, give, me, give me your Facebook page, too. Well, well, we'll be up on the Facebook again because we just, I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Uh, of course, you can check it out, watch it for a on www.rick.com. Artmedia.org. So, yeah, so. Uh, mm-hmm. B-R-I-C. You no, know, no, no. B-R, yeah, it's B-R-I-C, B-R-I-C, Artsmedia.org. Yep. Slash one. Mm-hmm. That's number one right there. Okay. Now you can check it out. And also you can check out past episodes of Road Tip with Ron Rodden on YouTube. And by the way, we are back on Facebook because somebody hacked my Facebook account. So we will read. Because we're rebuilding the uh, the page, and we're hoping to get everything up there, so we'll have the the past episode and some brand new episodes. So we'll keep you posted as soon as I get everything up for it. No. Okay, so for more information on Ron Rondon's show, you can go to www.brickartsmedia.org. That's B R I C. Artsmedia.org. And for more information on Able Done On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. That's O R C A Media.net. Um, we would like to thank our sponsors Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and the many, many, many partnerships, including the Association for the Blind of Vermont. Uh, of um, the Division for the Blind of Vermont, Habitat for Humanity of Central Vermont, and many, many, many others, including Yehad of New York and New England, the Orthodox Union, and also the partnership of um, Road Trip with Ron Rondon at BrickArtsMedia.org. 
Um, again, uh, uh, Ron Rondon, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Den On Air. I'm Lauren, si I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Eileen Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, media editors, New York Parrot online newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Den On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.